Believe it, believe it, and this yeah. So, Iman in Quran. So, what does that actually equate to? It really means that this book is strong. We believe firmly that this book is strong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is Kalamullah. This is not a Kalam of any, any human being or uh, anything like this. It was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as in its original form, it has been translated to us. So, what we have now. Is Alhamdulillah, it is the actual Quran of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no tahrif, no tasreef whatsoever in this book. So, this is the easy part of uh, the Iman. But what does that equate to really? It really means that this is the book which gives me, which is the solution for all of my problems. All of my problems. Not only in this world, so related to my risk, you know, and risk extends to, of course. You know, uh, the, uh, the money that I need to buy things and so on, my houses, my wife, my children and, you know, clothing and house and houses and everything that, that I use, that is all risk. So all of the problems related to my risk are, the solution is in this book. This is part of our Iman. As well as the solution for the salvation hereafter. So, more importantly, this book, we believe 100% that this tells us the, the solution of, of how to get uh, the, uh, the, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hereafter and how to get to the paradise. Yeah? So in other words, this book is my eyes. This book is my ears. This book is my hands. This book is my, you know, foot with which I walk and, and so on and so forth. Uh, as Aisha radiallahu anha told us about the ikhlaq of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is it? The Quran. His khulq or his ikhlaq is like Quran, you know, so everything that he does is, is like Quran. So this is what we need to really believe in. And as you said, if you really believe in all of this, that this is the solution to all of your problems, then what should you do? Of course, the very first thing that we need to do is that, that which is the takes us to the second right of the Quran is the talawa or the recitation of this book. So we need to obviously read this, read this, you know, the guidance that is given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, uh, Sheikh Adam told us yesterday about this uh, example that, you know, if uh, someone to tells us that you get $2 million if you don't get out of your houses for 10, 10 nights, you know, nobody will get out of there. You know, $2 million is maybe too high, you know. He said this price, maybe 100000 will be enough. Yeah. So I say the same thing. So imagine if someone tells you, that you get a one million dollar or two million dollar, I will use the same amount, you know, uh, per annum uh, salary. If you finish this book, if you understand this book completely, you will get two million dollar salary. You know, Alhamdulillah, all of us will do that. But really, brothers, as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells, tells us this, who khairun minna yajmaun. This is better than whatever we can collect. Whatever we can collect, this book is better than this. So recitation, and uh, I will use some of the, uh, you know, uh, ayat from Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ أُولَٰئِكَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ وَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرِينَ الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ Those who, whom we give this book who we give the book يَتْلُونَهُ تِلَاوَة So now when recitation, the two words are used which is tilawa and qira' Yeah, so qira is generally used for, uh, you know, when we talk to, uh, about tajweed and beautifying and, and all of that, we, we'll discuss in a minute. But tilawa is, uh, literally it means, tala yatlu means to come after. You know, sometimes you are uh, using your finger to follow the words after word. You know, that is what, you know, uh, literally it means by tilawa. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is relating directly the iman with tilawa. He says, ulaika yu'minuna, those who does the tilawa, which way? Haqqa tilawati. The way it should be done. The way it should be recited. They are the one who believe in them. And then after this, the stern warning comes. We say, وَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرِ And whoever disbelieve in this, 
they are the ones who are losers. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say, وَمَن, وَمَن لَا يَتْلُو You know, the ones who don't res- recite, they are the losers. He's saying that the ones who do the kufr. So in other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is equating here is that you know, res- not reciting this book is like, you know, uh, really not believing in it. So the, the iman uh, literally means to believe in it. The second thing which comes under the recitation is tajweed, as we said. Uh, and there's a hadith, very beautiful hadith from Prophet ﷺ. Tajweed literally means to beautify uh, in, in, in your recitation and also pronouncing it properly, doing the makharij and all that. وَأَنْ أَبِي إِمَامْ أَبِي لَبَابَةَ بَشِيرٍ بِنْ عَبْدِ الْمَنْدَرِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ أَنَّ النَّبِيِّ قَالَ أَنَّ النَّبِيَّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ قَالَ مَنْ لَمْ يَتَغَنَّ بِالْقُرْآنِ فَلَيْسَ مِنَّا So this is a hadith related by Abi Lababa رضي الله عنه He said that Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that whoever doesn't uh, beautify or you know recite the Quran in a melodious voice he is not amongst us. So try to do as much as best as you can, but we don't need to do takalluk, you know, we don't need to do uh, outside, you know, some people are just singing like, you know, it's, it's not a singing. So doing recitation properly. And before you do tajweed, before you try to beautify, it is better that you correct your makharij first. So correct your makharij and then you try to do the tajweed, which is beautiful. And Allah, uh, you know, some of the people we understand that <coughs> The people who don't have Arabic as their first language, obviously it is difficult for them to pronounce it properly. And here is a good news, uh, again from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Aisha radiallahu anha qalat, qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, الَّذِي يَقْرَأَ الْقُرْآنَ وَهُوَ مَاهِرٌ بِي مَعَ السَّفَرَةَ الْكَرَامَ الْبَرَرَةَ وَالَّذِي يَقْرَأَ الْقُرْآنَ وَيَتَتَعَى فِيهِ وَهُوَ عَلَيْهِ شَاقٌ لَهُ أَجْرَانِ So here Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying that whoever uh, reads the Quran and he is, uh, you know, he's a mahir, he's uh, uh, like a master over it. He's, he's, he has really got good command over it. He will be on the day of resurrection with the very respected, esteemed angels, the Safaratul Karam al Bala. And whoever reads, uh, tries, tries to recite, recite the Quran but he, you know, uh, struggles in it and cannot do it and he, he's trying to do best of his effort but still he's finding it difficult, he has two rewards. So you know he's trying and obviously he's reciting the Quran. So here uh, there's a double reward for those who try uh, but do not, do not get it right. So there is no excuse really to, uh, to not follow. The third point under recitation is Tartib. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, tells us in Surah Al-Muzammil, وَرَدِّلَ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِيلًا So read the Quran slowly, nicely, you know, easily. Uh, don't rush with it. And we know that how Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba used to recite of the, the, the Quran. Uh, so some of the hadith tells us that when Prophet ﷺ used to recite the Quran, the people behind in the sukuf, in the rows behind him, he, they would say that it's like, you know, uh, something boiling on a, uh, on a stove. So if, if you put a pot with water in it, that's when it boils, you know, how he's... So out of his crying, people can see, uh, can listen to his crying and so on. And Abu Bakr who was so soft-hearted, we know that, that you know, uh, when Prophet ﷺ got sick towards the end of his life, you know, he wanted Abu Bakr to lead the salah. And Aisha radiallahu anha said that he is very soft-hearted, you know, he, he cries a lot when he reads Quran, so people won't understand what he's saying, but he still uh, asked that Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu be. Uh, to lead the salah and so on. So, so we need to really connect with it. And the uh, final point, maybe, sorry, the third point, uh, fourth point is regularity. You know, it's not only for Ramadan. You know, so uh, again, the same thing. If you're doing just 27th night, uh, you're just waiting for one night, it doesn't work like that. You have to have the regularity. Now, again, Sahaba radiallahu anhu, they used to finish the Quran in one week. You know, you have in the Quran seven manazil, Manzil one, two, three, uh, and uh, some people call them Ahzab as well, his. So we have seven his, and that was like every day they would finish one his. So they would finish Quran in, in seven days or one week. But think about this, you know, maybe 30 days, maybe once in a year, do something, but it has to be regular. Uh, the, another thing is manners or the adab of the Quran. So when you're reciting, obviously it needs to be uh, put properly and so on. Uh, some people really are very, uh, are not careful in terms of, you know, how to treat with the book itself. It needs to be treated properly and so on. And finally, memorization. 
uh, the hips, there are a number of ahadiths which talks about the merit of hips. Uh, I'm not going to go into that uh, because of the shortage of time, but really memorization is one thing that will make you really close to, to this book and also it will make you uh, make it easy for you to understand this properly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who recite this book uh, the way it, needs, it should be recited.